So some of the things we were talking about last time, uh, we were talking about different forms of visible light in terms of the different colors, right? <laughs> so last time we said that there are three primary colors. And do we remember those three primary colors are? Red, blue, and green. Those are the three primaries. And we know that the three primaries because those are the only three colors we can see. And we talked about that biology, right? Meaning that we have red cones, blue cones, and green cones on the retina of our eyes that respond to those different wavelengths. Whenever our eyes see a mixture of red and green and blue together, our brain tells us that that's white. So when we're looking at the white walls in this room, we have white light. We're going to call it white. We know that the light from these fluorescents is not true white, though, right? Because true white is an equal mixture of all the colors. But we know that these fluorescent lights actually have a little bit more green in them. But they are actually white because it does have red, green, and blue, just a little bit more green. But when that white light hits these white walls, the reason that these white walls are white is because it's reflecting all three colors. The blue chairs that are in the room here, the reason that these blue chairs are blue is because the white light hits it, and the blue reflects off and it absorbs the other colors. Again, we can only see three colors, though, red, blue, and green. Yet, we can perceive, or rather be fooled into thinking we see, the other colors. All right? Yellow, for example, there is a yellow wavelength, and we talk about that, right? The yellow wavelength is around 600 and something nanometers, 640 nanometers. We just can't see it. Remember, we talked about that metaphor of our eyeballs being an antenna, and it's a, that's a station we just can't tune into. Yet, we can look at a, a yellow notebook, like a legal pad, and it's got yellow paper, though, right? But it's not reflecting. The paper of that legal notebook is not reflecting 620 nanometers. It's reflecting a mixture of what two of the primary colors? Red and green. Right, so what we need to talk about, besides just the three primary colors, we need to talk about the three, what we refer to as inverse colors, or the three opposite colors, or what I call the three subtractive colors. All right, so let's talk about those. I'm going to get our, our presentation going back here again. There's the, we call them the three, there's a variety of different terms that are used. They're called the three subtractive colors. Oops. So they're called the three subtractive colors, or they're sometimes called the three inverse colors. Meaning opposite, the three opposite colors. All right, let me explain why. We know... And I'm going to demonstrate for you in a moment. I'm going to turn the lights off, and I'm going to demonstrate for you in a moment mixing up the three colors. We already know that if you take red light, green light, and blue light and mix it together, we know that you get white. What happens when you only take two of the colors and mix them together? If you only take two of the three and mix them together, you're going to get what we call one of the subtractive or inverse colors. First of all, let's list them. Do you guys think you know what the three subtractive or inverse colors might be? If red, green, and blue are the three primaries, and by the way, a very likely test question on our quiz that's coming up is what are the three primaries? Another very likely test question is what are the three subtractive colors? So you need to know what they are. Do we think we know what they are? Anyone want to throw one out there for me? Yellow. Yellow is one of them. Yellow is one of them. What's that? It's not pink. It looks like pink, but it has a different name. It's magenta. Magenta. M-A-G-E-N-T-A. -E so magenta is kind of a pinkish, purplish color. If you guys... Remember, I, my kids, when they were real little, used to watch this show on PBS called Blue's Clues. No, I'm sorry, it's Nickelodeon. Blue's Clues, right? Blue's Clues was that little kind of puppet dog, right? And Steve was, was his friend. If, if you ever watched the show with your kids, their next-door neighbor, there was a next-door neighbor, and Steve's next-door neighbor had a little dog, too, and the little dog's name was Magenta, and it was a little pinkish-purple color. So Magenta, it's a kind of a pinkish-purple color. So, the, so we have two of the three. First one's yellow, second one's magenta. Does anyone know what the third one is? Cyan. It's cyan. C Y A N. Cyan. Which is kind of like an aquamarine color, and you're exactly right. PJ, the colors that are in printer ink, those are the three colors. In, in your printer ink, there's an ink cartridge that has cyan in it, which is kind of an aquamarine color, one that has magenta, and one that has yellow. And actually, if you take yellow ink, <clears throat> magenta ink and cyan ink and mix it together, you get black. 
In fact, if you have a color printer, you actually don't need a black cartridge because any color printer can print black by simply mixing cyan, magenta, and yellow together. It is much more expensive, that's correct. Your black ink pen, if you were to take the black ink out of your ink pen, if you were to separate it, and we can do that in the crime lab, we call it chromatography. If you were to separate out the colors in a black ink pen, guess what the colors of a black ink pen are? Cyan, magenta, and yellow. Exactly right. Uh, that's the process of chromatography. It's usually separated using a liquid like alcohol, for example. Same process. All right, so let's talk about these colors, for example. Okay, <coughs> there's a reason that I'm going to call them subtractive colors, right? Instead of just inverse. The reason we call them inverse is because yellow is the opposite of blue. Yellow is the opposite of blue. You guys have maybe heard of that color wheel, right? In terms of like design, yellow is opposite with blue. Cyan is the opposite with red, right? And magenta is the opposite of green. And let's talk about why. Okay, so if I take green light, again, we're not talking about green paint, we're talking about green light, and I mix it with some red light, right? And then I add some blue light in there. So if I take all three of the primaries together, Red, green, and blue, equal mixture of the three. What am I going to get? White, exactly right. And again, we know that because Isaac Newton demonstrated that, right? He took white light, shone it through a prism, split it into the, the, the rainbow. So far, so good. So if I get three light bulbs in those colors and turn them all on, I'm going to get white. I'm exactly right. In fact, Del, I'm going to demonstrate that in just a few minutes. I'm going to turn the lights off. That's what this little device here is. It's like three different lights. There's a red light, a blue light, and a green light. We're going to turn them all on and mix the light together, and you're going to see that I'm not lying to you. Okay. <laughs> all right, now, but here's the thing. What if I don't add all three together? What if I only use two of them? So, for example, what if I took white? Now, we know white is all three mixed together, correct? What if I took, out, what if I took white? What if I eliminated? So, what if I subtracted the blue? Right? What would be left over? Red and green. Now, when red and green mix together, guess what I get? Yellow. Yellow. Um. Del doesn't believe me. I promise I'm going to demonstrate it for you, Del. You're going to you'll believe me once you see it. I promise. All right. So, so white subtract the blue equals yellow. Or the other way we could say this would be to say what? We could say green plus red equals yellow. Exactly right. So that's why, you see, that's why yellow is a subtractive color. Because it's white, subtract out the blue, what's left behind? Yellow. Does that make sense? So every color that you subtract out is going to be the opposite color of what you did. That's have. correct. So, I said before that magenta is the opposite of what primary? Green. green. So if you take white and you subtract out the green, you're going to get magenta. <clears throat> That's correct, yes. Blue and red is magenta. You're good. I had to make sure. Just for a second there, I almost thought I lost it. Yes, correct. So if so if you take, so let's write that as I like math, so I like writing these equations like this. All right. So what happens then? So so Anna says, what if we take white? Again, white is all three together, correct? And this time, if we subtract out the green, so we take out the green this time, subtracting green, what would be left over? Blue and red, and if you mix blue and red together, guess what you get? Magenta. <clears throat> so then, what if we took white and we eliminated the red? What would be left over? Green and blue, and that makes cyan. Exactly right. So far, so good? Now, there are other colors in these, though. What about orange? What's orange? Well, what, what are the, which of the subtractives does orange kind of look like? It kind of looks a little bit like yellow, a little bit like red. Well, the way you make orange is the same way you make, you make yellow. The difference is, now remember, yellow is an equal mixture of red and green. The way you make orange 
is you mix red and green together, but you just put more red. So if you were writing this as an equation, you would say that orange would be equal to two times the red plus a little bit of green. So again, if you were making pink, pink is kind of like magenta. Remember, magenta is a mixture of blue and red. If you were making pink, you would simply mix blue and red, but you just put more red. If I want to make purple, I would put more blue. The point I'm trying to make is every color can be made by simply mixing what three colors? Red, green, blue. Exactly right. Now, think about this for a moment. I think last time we talked about, and even we mentioned a few minutes ago, that these fluorescent lights have which color in too much abundance? Green. green. Right, so I need to get rid of the excess green. And one of the ways I could do that, we talked last time about potentially <coughs> on the front of our camera, we might put a colored filter, right? So here are some filters, here's a red one, here's a green one. If I wanted to put a filter on the front of my camera, and I wanted to get rid of the green, right? <clears throat> what primarily would still come through? Red and blue, red and blue, exactly right. So if I had a filter that let the red and blue go through, if I were looking through the filter, what color would it look? All right, let me, let me, let me ask you this one. This one's a little easier. What color is this? Red. All right, and that's because white light is hitting it. Now, filters are partially transparent, right? Remember, when light hits something, you do one of four things. It can reflect, it can absorb, it can transmit, or it can refract. When you have a filter, some of the light goes through. And in fact, I think I gave you the definition of filter last time. Did I not? It should be in your notes. Let's check and make sure. Does anyone remember the definition of filter I gave you guys last time? Okay. Thank you. A filter blocks a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. So this filter, this filter which is red in color, light is hitting this filter. Some of it is going through. Some of it's being blocked. As I look through this filter, what color do you guys look? Red. red. Because what is making through the filter? The red. What is being blocked? The blue and green. Right? So filters that are red are transmitting red, but they're blocking blue and green. Now, then, filters that are, here's a blue filter. Filters that are blue are transmitting blue, but they're blocking red and green. What if I needed a filter that, before I get to that, what about this green filter? What's transmitting? Green. green. What's being blocked? Red and blue. If I had a filter, though, that was blocking the green, what would be transmitting? Blue and red. And so if I were looking through it, what color would it look? Magenta. Exactly right. The filter would. So let me pull up another picture for you guys real quick. In terms of looking at filters, remember filters block a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. So what we see here, these are three filters. Remember, fil most filters, unlike these ones which are square, Remember last time I said, most filters are actually round like this, right? Because you're going to screw them onto the end of your lens. So here we have three filters. You can see they're actually overlapping each other a little bit. And in this situation, we have a light that's coming through the filters. This filter, by the way, these are our three subtractive colors. Yellow, magenta, cyan, right? This one down here, the one that's magenta, the light is going through it. Which color is this filter blocking? It's blocking the green. So what's coming through? Red and blue, which you're mixing together, and you see magenta. This filter, <coughs> the one that's yellow, is actually blocking which color? Blue, letting the red and green come through. Remember, when red and green makes you get yellow. And so then that means this cyan one's blocking red. Notice, by the way, when they're all overlapped, this one's blocking blue. This one's blocking red. This one's blocking green. So for notice, if you put all three filters on the end of your camera, what would make it through? Black. Nothing. It would be black. That's why if you take yellow ink, yellow ink absorbs 
to blue and reflects red and green. But if you mix yellow ink with cyan ink, remember the cyan reflects the red, sorry, sorry, not the red, it absorbs the red, but it reflects blue and green. And then if you take, which one did I not mention so far? Magenta. Magenta reflects the blue and the red, but absorbs the green. If you mix the three inks together, they're going to absorb all the light, which means it's going to be what? Black. Yes, what's your question? Yes, um, yes. You gave us, I think, a blue filter and a red apple, and said the apple would be black. That's correct. Oh, I didn't think about that for a moment. On a, on a picture, on a photo, is that going to be invisible, or is it going to be... Not invisible. There's an instrument invisible or black. Of an apple in black. Okay, so think about this. If we took this blue filter, right, and, and let's say when we took a photo, we were in a room where the only light source was, let's say, a flashlight. So I held a flashlight behind this filter. Are you with me so far? That would mean that the only light that's, that's going to be illuminating the room, because remember, the light is sitting behind the filter. This filter only lets what go through? Only lets the blue go through, right? So remember, why is a red apple red? It's red because it reflects the red and it absorbs the other colors. So does a red apple absorb blue light? The answer is yes. So if I took my flashlight, all right, so I turn the rest of the lights off. So there's no other light except for the light from the flashlight. I put that flashlight behind my filter. The light then coming through the filter would only be what color? It would only be blue. And if that blue light hit the surface of the apple, what do red apples do to blue light? Absorb it. So what would reflect off? No color. And what is the absence of reflected color? Black. So we would have made a red apple. We didn't change its color. We made it look like a black apple, but in reality, it's still a red apple. Does that make sense? Yes, so the picture would be a black apple. That's correct. If you took a photo that way, that apple would look black. It's not really black, but you made it look that way because you changed the light source. Okay, you got a question? Um, it kind of goes along with what you're talking about the red apple, because this is in my eyesight, but mm -hmm. it's just I'm visioning. Yep, I'm listening. I'm just I'm monkeying here, but I'm listening to you.